What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. You join us on a rainy November morning up in Kings Lynn because we're visiting Anglia Car Auctions for their classic car two day sale event. Now there's loads of classic cars around us. Let's get straight to it and have a look what bargains we can find over the weekend. Let's kick this sale off with this rare 1984 Fiat Uno 45. ES. Now the ES stands for energy saving. Just looking at the interior of this Uno, it's looking very presentable. Now it was all about economy, this car it had an electronic fuel system that restricted petrol supply under certain circumstances. It also has a MPG gauge on the dash and a warning to say when to shift up. I've just lifted the bonnet to reveal the Diddy little engine. This is a 903cc engine, which produces 45 brake horsepower, and it was capable of 65.7 miles per gallon. The economic Uno ES has got 73,000 miles on the clocks, but it hasn't been MOT'd since 2007. It looks really tidy, but yeah, it's just not on the road. It doesn't have MOT at the moment. And this weekend at Anglia Car Auctions, there is no reserve on the Uno ES. So let's find out what that goes for. Moving on, I've just came across a Capri that someone in the comment section has been wanting to see. This is a 1982 Ford Capri 2.8 injection. The description states that the Capri's first owner owns the car for 36 years and it's only showing three previous keepers on the logbook. The Capri is showing 72,000 miles and it's fitted with this rare check cloth interior which I absolutely love all on the seats and it follows through onto the door cards now here is that 2.8 injection engine as you can see someone has added some silicone hoses as we look over the strut tops on this classic Ford they look really good it's usually one of the first places to go it's looking nice and rust free under here fitted with its original Capri pepper pots they look in great condition and so does the bodywork. The estimate on the 2.8 injection Capri is seven to nine thousand pounds. The 2.8 injection Capri, we picked it up, we done the right work this. We believe you drove it at 77, 78. That's kept you all in the end at 7 out of 3 7 9. No, 7 9, you want 8 down on the back. That's 7 9, 8 down, 9 2 in the middle, 9 3, 9 3, 9 4. 11.5, I've just stumbled across another car that a subscriber wanted to see. This is a 1973 Hillman Imp Deluxe. Now this comes with a nice little story. After being unused and stored since 1991, the Hillman Imp went under a restoration over a six year period from 2016 to 2022. The mileage is reading 46,000 miles, but I'm not sure if that's genuine or not. As I always say, go back on old MOTs and try and gauge whether it's been round the clock or not. Nice little sticker in the back here, zero to 60 in 15 minutes. <laughs> and this rear window actually goes up like that which is pretty quirky. The something else that's really quirky is the engine. Here we have the four cylinder rear engines, 875cc engine. I'm not too sure because I've never looked around one of these. Is that air cooled? It could possibly be. Now this weekend at Anglia Car Auctions, the Hillman Imp is offered as a no reserve. We just ventured outside into the rain to look at the Sierra's pickup version in this 1991 Ford P100 
popular Turbo D. Well, that's a name and a half. With six previous keepers, the P100 is described to be completely original and unrestored. And I tell you what, it actually looks in half decent condition. I mean, you got rips of the bolster there, but nothing new. A little bit of peel into the door cards, but for an unrestored classic Ford, it doesn't look too bad. Not a lot of room to look in the back of this, but I managed to get the GoPro in there. I think this is some sort of fiberglass body on it. Certainly some body work to do if you were to make this into a mint pickup. But I really do love the pressed Ford tailgate. That looks brilliant. I've just popped the bonnet to reveal the 1.8 diesel turbo engine. It's recently had a cam belt and some other work done to it. The P100 is showing 83,000 miles and has MOT until April 2024. As I say, just a bit of a workhorse really, with the estimate being four and a half to six and a half thousand pounds. Up next, we've just come across this quirky little 1989 Bedford Rascal Danbury. Just before we show you insides of the Rascal camper van, I want to give a massive thank you to this week's video sponsor, Sterling Insurance. Sterling Insurance will cover the most weird and wonderful van conversions, just like this quirky little Rascal. Also, Sterling Insurance will insure your camper van builds. Just like me and Lauren, if you're turning a van into a camper van, they can still insure you. Another thing I found really useful with Sterling Insurance was their agreed value. Because we all know that a lot of time and effort goes into these camper van conversions, so it's good to know that you're covered for the full cost of the vehicle. If you click the link in the description below, you can get in contact with Sterling Insurance and get your camper van insured today. Well, there's no denying that it's a very small camper van. This is Lauren's size. It does have its pop-up roof up there. And yeah, it's very, very basic throughout. I've got to say, I'm really loving that tiny little rascal steering wheel. <laughs> That's cool. I'm not quite sure what this is. Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> so this rascal has recently been used on private land and the MOT expired in 2017 and back then it had 112,000 miles on the clock. I'll tell you what though, just by having a quick wander around it, it doesn't look in bad condition. Hopefully there's not loads of rot hiding underneath and someone can actually get this back on the road. I really do like these hubcaps as well. They are proper cool. It's a shame that the front one is missing. <laughs> anyway, today at Anglia Car Auctions, the estimate on this is two to three thousand pounds. Let's see what that goes for. Now some may disagree with this statement, but I believe this is a rare little car. This is a limited edition Ford Puma Thunder, which is finished in Magnum Grey. The 2002 Puma has covered 118,000 miles. In here, we've got its all black leather seats and interior. It's looking in good condition considering the mileage. It's still got its original 17 inch alloys and it was driven 80 miles to this auction to be sold here. I've just popped the bonnet to reveal the 1.7 ZTEC engine in the Puma. Now this Puma has got MOT until January 2024. Much like many of the Pumas that I've recently seen, this is a true survivor. It's hardly, well, there isn't any rust at all that I've found. Um, I thought that was a tiny little blister, but it's not just a bit of rain. So yeah, that is a clean Puma and a true survivor. Here at Anglia Car Auctions today, this is a no reserve. So let's find out what that goes for. Seven hundred pounds, eight hundred pounds, nine hundred pounds, back of the room. That's nine hundred. That's nine hundred pounds. The old shower going back. 
That's crazy, 1100 pounds for a Puma. Next up we've got this police car. It's a 1994 Vauxhall Cavalier 2 litre GLS, which has come direct from a film crew. Now this was used on set very regularly. Now I've just topped in the Cavalier to find that there's no radios or anything in here because it wasn't actually a ex-police car, it's just been used on a film set. It's showing 89,000 miles and the MOT did run out back in 2020, so it's currently off the road. It's fair to say that the headlining is going to need some attention. Ooh, loads of mould on it as well. <laughs> yeah, it's fair to say the Cavalier has been neglected. The headlining's all drooped down at the back as well and it's all green in the gutters. It needs a good old clean and probably all of the police livery taken off of it because under that looks a half decent two litre Cavalier. Now there is the two litre petrol injection engine in the Cavalier. I think this just needs some light recommissioning to get it back on the road. Now today at Anglia Car Auction, this is offered as a no reserve. So no telling what that's gonna go for. Let's find out. Moving on now to the first Mini of the sale in this 1990 Rover Mini 1000 City. The Rover Mini is showing 75,000 miles. And it's just a brief look of the interior. It looks in great condition. And the vendor has owned this since 1993 and it was daily driven until recently. A restoration started in 2019 using British Motor Heritage seal panels and floors welded and repaired, the subframe replaced, and it's even had its brakes overhauled. And there is the engine bay, nice and presentable, just like the rest of the Mini. Now it's sad, someone's really looked after this Mini for a long time. It's got MOT until September 2024, but the reason for sale is you, Les. Anyway, today it's offered as a no reserve. Wow, loads of no reserve cars. Let's find out what that goes for. On YouTube, but there we are, lot 247 there, we've got the Rover Mini City. First registered 1990, at 2004, 25 at the back. At 252627, at 2700 pound, I've been down there at 27. Three three is going twice. Last time, you sure you're all going to know that three three is yours, outright and none. Yours it is, three three. Now we're looking around this 1990 Renault 5 1.2 Campus, which was originally registered in Northern Ireland in 1990 before coming to England and being registered in October 1997. Now this Renault 5 seems to be quite the survivor. It's only got two registered former keepers. The odometer is reading 52,000 miles and it's got MOT until October 2024, so nearly a 12 months ticket on it. It's said that the Renault 5 campus travelled over 100 miles to get to the sale. I've just been walking around it and I haven't found one blemish on the paintwork. Really nice, including the sunroof. There is the little 1.2 engine. It's barely been ran in at that mileage and also good to see that there's no signs of rust or rot around the engine bay and the bonnet looking fairly clean that's quite a rare car now considering how little Renault 5s are left on the road now the estimate is two to three thousand pounds Moving from one French car to another, this is a 1991 Citroen AX GT. That's a first for me looking around one of these. Now there's only 243 AX GTs left in the UK and only 25 registered on the roads. The rest are currently sawned. Now this example is showing 112,000 miles. It's always good when there's some relays hanging down under the dash. <laughs> Now this has only had three former keepers and the MOT ran out in 2021 so it's currently off the road but hopefully someone could get this rare little car back on the road. 
Now I can't find the bonnet release for the AX GT, but I do know there's a four cylinder or 1.4 litre petrol engine under there. Now it's not the biggest of engines, but this little AX only weighs 640 kilograms. So I'm sure that'll be plenty of fun still. I think it would be fair to say it does need some recommissioning to get it back on the road. It was also a Cat D insurance loss in 1998. But there's a no reserve on the AX GT, so let's find out what that goes for. Right, here's the second Mini of the sale. This 1969 Morris Mini 1000 Traveller. Now this was garaged from 1980 to 2020. 40 years it was garaged for. It does have some two-tone paintwork. The front end is a completely different colour to the rest. Now the Mini Minor 1000 doesn't need MOT anymore because it is a historic vehicle, but the vendor has put it through and it's valid until August 2024. The vendor states that the Mini starts on the button and drives well. It's only selling due to loss of storage. Now the clocks are reading 64,000 miles. As I say, always go back on old MOTs to try and gauge whether that has been around the clock or not. But either way, that's looking in good condition in the interior. I'm loving them tiny little red seats. I've just opened the bonnet to reveal the engine. Now this has had lots of work and parts fitted to it recently, including a new ignition coil, leads, plugs, four tires, it's had brake overhauls, lots of work gone into the mechanical sides of this Mini. Now the only thing that is really letting it down is the paintwork I'd say, but a new paint job and I think that'll be looking brand new again. Anyway, today the estimate is Three and a half to four and a half on this Morris Mini Traveller. Every time we come to Anglia car auctions, there's always one of these escort vans and I love them. This is a 1999 Ford Escort 55D van. Now, although this Escort van might look a bit rough and ready, it's only had one registered keeper from new, which is quite surprising. And it's only covered 65,000 miles. Now that is warranted. Just lifted the bonnet to reveal the 1.8 Endura DE engine. I've said this before, these are very slow, but very good on diesel. Now this van comes with the original bill of sale, two keys, full book pack, it's got it all. Now the colour of the Escort van is pepper red, but it's got loads of dings on it, the bonnet, that wing there, a little bit naughty, and that wing has been proper bashed in, loads of marks down the door, and as you can see, this passenger side is even damaged as well. So yeah, it's definitely been used and abused, the old Escort van. Not a minter by any means, but it's here today as a no reserve, so I'm quite interested to see what that makes, considering the condition. This will go for no money. This will go for no money. No money, probably. There's not one panel of straight on it. Now we're looking around this 1997 Rover 100 Knightsbridge. I've got to say, I absolutely love the colour. It's called Tahiti Blue. Yeah really nice even in this terrible weather now another surprising low mileage this metro has covered just 44,000 miles really has 
not run in yet. <laughs> and I tell you what, them seats look brilliant. Look at the condition of them. Door card on that side looks good. Yeah, it's lovely. Now the service book for this has 24 stamps in it. That's got to be nearly one a year, surely. I uh, haven't worked out the maths yet, but yeah, it's not far off one a year. I've just opened the bonnet and really surprised at the condition of this engine bay. There's a diddy little Rover engine. Now, this Rover 100 comes with loads of old paperwork and invoices for servicing. But it also comes with the original bill of sale, which was £5,995. With MOT until August 2024, today the Rover 100 is estimated two to two and a half thousand pounds. Up next we've got a 1989 Ford Escort XR3i Cabriolet, not the best weather for a Cabriolet, let's have a look inside. The XR3i has a valid MOT until June 2024, oh lovely puddle there, I think that is why they've got some bin bags, the roof must be leaking a lot, yep just seen the trip. It's covered 104,000 miles but as we can see it's got some major leakage issues just having a quick look in the boot there's a lot less water in here <laughs> it does have all five alloy wheels including the spare now, something i did just spot is some of the overspray on this light and just some careless repairs i think it has had some bodywork here and there in 2011 the xr 3i cabriolet was a cat d insurance write-off and today at anglia car auctions the estimate is just two to two and a half thousand pounds and i think that reflects the condition it's in Next, I've stumbled across a BMW. This is a 1988 BMW 635 CSI Auto. The BMW has had six previous keepers and it's showing 171,000 miles. Now, the interior does look slightly worn here and there, but overall, not too bad. What's that? <laughs> I don't want to be really dumb, but what is that? I'm not sure. I don't think it is a telephone actually, might be a radio of some kind. As I've just opened the bonnet, it's revealed the 3.5 straight six engine, which looks to be in great condition. I'll tell you one thing I'm loving though, is the BBS alloys, split rim BBSs, very, very nice. Some recent work that's been carried out to the BMW include a service, the front calipers, pins greased, and also front ball joints being changed. The bodywork overall is looking in great condition, but unfortunately it's just starting to go on this scuttle where the windscreen meets it. The BMW 635 CSI has got MOT until February 2024, and it is offered as a no reserve. Next up we've got the most modified car in the auction being this 1982 VW Golf GTI. It's said that the GTI has been built for track but it is still road legal. It's crazy. It's said that there's a lot of money that has gone into this. One thing I am loving is these bucket seats. They look kind of comfy actually. I think that's Alcantara, very nice with the 
crossed red stitching on them as well. The GTI has had most of the glass replaced with poly windows, apart from the front windscreen, that's still glass. And it's also got these air ducts on the rear poly windows, which allow airflow into the cabin. It features these very cool turbo wheels, and it's also got these huge arches to fit them wheels under. It's got a long list of the spec for the engine, so I'll whack that up on the screen now. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to look underneath the bonnet because it's got loads of pins on it, and I don't wanna remove the full bonnet to look underneath. But yeah, this is one heck of a build, and it does also have MOT until July 2024. As I said, it is still a road legal car. Lots of livery all over it. I think this would be quite the weapon on the track. That's a very cool GTI and it's estimated 12 to 14 thousand pounds. Next up, we've got this 1982 Austin Morris Mini 95L van, originally supplied to a painter and decorator from Essex by BL dealer Harvey Hudson of Woodford, London, and it was used for 10 years until the clutch went. Now the story continues, when the clutch went, it was then laid up in a barn for 25 years, only emerging in late 2017. The Mini then went under a five year restoration, only coming back out onto the roads this year. There's loads of welding done, there's loads of work done to the engine. Someone has completely restored this. Here is the 998cc engine, which has been completely restored, just like the rest of the Mini. Now that's very nice. I'm not sure if that's the original dealer sticker or a replica, but a nice touch. And just a sticker for a laugh. <laughs> I was also just reading that the seats have been re-upholstered and it's also got some carpet now in the back of the van. Anyway, what a cracking little minivan and a great story to go with it as well. Great to see it back on the roads after 25 years in a barn. Now the estimate this weekend at Anglo Car Auctions is 10 to 12 thousand pounds. Here we enter another classic Ford in this 1991 top of the range gear spec. Now you're all about to be very shocked by this mileage. It's showing just 13,000 miles. Now the description states it's generally supported by the history and the file. So yeah, that could well be genuine. You'd have to look back on old MOTs, but they think this has been stored for quite a few years between its various owners. The Sierra Estate comes with a couple of spare parts. It is in real good condition. Just looking down the side of it now, there's a couple of things, but nothing too major. It's on the road and MOT'd until November 2024. So full 12 months ticket on it. The Sierra Estate does come with the original bill of sale for 14,800 pounds. And there is the petrol two litre double overhead cam engine, which looks to be in good condition. Battery tray looks nice and clean. And yeah, overall, under here looks nice and presentable. I haven't actually spotted too much rust on this. The bodywork is gleaming, it's absolutely immaculate, but yeah, even under the bonnet, it looks surprisingly clean for an old Ford. Well, there we have it. That is quite the low mileage Sierra Estate with an estimate of five to seven thousand pounds. Let's find out what that goes for. 
Next up, we've got this 1982 BMW E21 320, and a vendor has owned this for 37 years. It was only four years old when they purchased it. The 320 BMW is said to be in its original state, and it's never been welded. It's been garaged since 1999. Here is the two-litre engine. It's said that it's running, driving, and stopping well with no overheating and a clutch and gearbox are working as they should, which is always good. The timing belt has been changed and there has been some light recommissioning to the engine recently. The vendor states that the BMW is structurally sound, albeit some rust to the rear arches, a slight bit under the window, but he has said there is structurally sound. That's a very cool BMW that hasn't really seen much of the roads. Anyway, it's offered as a no reserve. Next up, we're looking around this 1995 Vauxhall Corsa GSI. 16 valve, quite the hot hatch of its day. I think this is a Corsa B, I believe. The GSI is in completely standard condition. It hasn't been molested by a boy racer. It's showing 85,000 miles, which is believed to be genuine, and it's on the road with MOT until February 2024. Just checking out the back of the GSI. It's all really nice and clean. You can tell a car's been looked after when all the gutters are nice and clean, not filled with moss and green rubbish. It's had three previous keepers and it drove 72 miles to the auction. I've just lifted the bonnet. I believe this is a 1.6 engine, 16 valve. It's very, very clean. As you can see, such a presentable Corsa. I think you'd have your work cut out trying to find a cleaner one than this. Anyway, that's a real true unmodified survivor. The estimate on it this weekend is eight to 10,000 pounds. Next up, we've got another sporty Vauxhall in this 1991 Vauxhall Astra GTE. Now, I recently saw one of these at auction sell for 27 grand. I don't know if this one will make that, but let's have a look around it. The vendor purchased this Astra GTE in 2006 and has owned it ever since. It's said to be in good condition throughout. I do really love the styling on the seats and the door cards. I think that is proper cool. Just like the Corsa we were looking around, this Astra is in very good presentable condition. Can't find any blemishes in the paintwork. And it's only covered 53,000 miles, which is warranted and backed up by the paperwork. The Astra also has four new Pirelli tires as per the original spec of the vehicle. Here is the two litre 16 valve engine. And once again, looking around this engine bay, so presentable really is a true classic hot hatch. The estimate on the low mileage GTE is 15 to 18,000 pounds. I wouldn't be surprised if it went top end of that. That's 
We've just come across this 1985 Ford Granada 2.8 gear, which is in such good condition. This Granada was restored between 2017 and 2019, and it tells the paintwork is literally like glass. Can't find one swirl or imperfection in it. It really is lovely. Now this Granada definitely isn't one for the banger track. Someone spent a lot of time, effort, and money restoring this. But unfortunately, it doesn't have MOT. It's not exempt yet. It's a 1985, so it's got a couple years to go, but the MOT ran out in 2020. I've just come over the other side to show you guys how clean the interior is as well. It's showing 59,000 miles, proper low, but I don't know whether that's been around the clock or not. The boot is lovely and clean as well, featuring its fifth alloy wheel which is always good to see. You've got a nice set in there. I'm gonna to have to say it, this is the best paintwork that I've seen yet. Honestly, so nice to touch as well. It's just so smooth. Someone has really done a good job of respraying that and they've clearly waxed it afterwards and machined it all up. The estimate is nine to 11,000 pounds. So let's find out what that goes for. Better late than never. Here it is. How about this for a classic then? A 1966 Vauxhall Victor 101 Deluxe proper old barge. The Vauxhall Victor is in remarkably good condition inside. Uh, it is believed that the whole car had a restoration around four years ago, but it's said that the chassis and floors have never been welded. Well, I'm really surprised at the immaculate engine bay. There is the original 1.6 engine that's recently had a new carburetor, plugs and leads. But yeah, check that out. Fully restored. Loving the paintwork colour as well. It's always good to see it comes with some baking potatoes. <laughs> oh no, they're spares. We've got old steering wheel in there, bits of trim it looks like, and some old sun visors, which is always handy when buying a classic car. Well, I really like the Vauxhall Victor. Definitely not a car you're going to be seeing on the roads that much anymore. With an estimate of five to seven thousand pounds. Let's see what that goes for. Now this isn't really a classic, but a future classic, I believe. This is a 2006 VW Golf R32. Doesn't look much from the outside. Pretty subtle, but sporty. I've just lifted the bonnet to reveal the rare factory manual V6. That's a 3.2 V6. Not much to see under here. Lots of plastic covers and that, but yeah, beast of a engine. The Golf does have some added extras, including these heated Recaro leather seats and parking sensors. As we move onto the back end of the Golf, that's a pretty iconic sight. The two middle exhaust tips gives away that it's a bit of a sleeper because from the outside, I don't think it looks like too much really. The Golf has covered 94,000 miles and it is on the road. It's got MOT until May 2024. It does come with the service book, which has got 17 stamps in it, all from either dealerships or VW and Audi specialists. And I've got to say, just having a brief look over it, the paintwork looks pretty clean. For a black car, normally shows up loads of imperfections, but under the light here, it looks like it's been detailed and been looked after. Anyway, today at Anglia Car Auctions, the Golf R32 is a no reserve, so I'm really interested to see what that makes.
Wow, what an auction that was. So that was Anglia Car Auctions, November auction, and their last one of 2023. Some real cracking lots going through. I'm just gonna discuss a couple of them with you guys. Now that 2.8 Capri had an estimate of seven to 9,000 pounds. And after fees, it went for nearly 13 grand. I couldn't believe it. When I was watching the sale, it was just going up and up and up. I didn't think they were gonna stop. But yeah, that made some real strong money, nearly 13,000 pounds. Another car that shocked me was the Escort van. As you all, all probably know, if you've watched these videos before, I've got a bit of a soft spot for them. Now that Escort van had no reserve. There wasn't a straight panel on it, I think I said it in the video, but it sold for nearly 2,000 pounds. It might've just been just over 2,000 pounds, including fees. I couldn't believe it, that's crazy money. So if you've got an old rusty Escort van, get it in the auction. A couple of the cars that I did really like that weren't Fords were the Mark One Golf GTI, the track build, I thought that was wicked. It went provisionally, but then it did sell and also the R32 right at the ends. I loved that. I thought that was a cracking motor. Both made pretty strong money and yeah, it was good to see some sporty VWs. Now going from talking about strong prices down to the bargains, there were some real bargains there. I'm not going to be able to list them all off, but the Puma, that went for £1,100. I think it would have been £1,260 including fees. That's an absolute bargain. Had MOT and it looked like a real good tidy car. And there was also a couple of Mondeos that I didn't capture in this video that went through. There were sort of retro Mondeos, 90s, uh, but they all had MOT and they just went through for like a thousand pounds. It's just crazy, honestly. I think a lot of people from in London are getting rid of their cars because of ULEZ. There's nothing wrong with them and there'll probably be some true classics in a couple more years to come. But that was just a couple of the cars I wanted to talk about. Please let me know what your car of the auction was in the comments section below. I always like to read your comments and I do try and reply to all of them. Now I do just want to give a massive shout out to Anglia Car Auctions for making the sale just flow so well. And something I I've sort of known about but never really acknowledged is the hard work that goes into getting the cars running to go through the auction. I think at the end there was two or three cars that wouldn't start and they were all under the bonnet trying to get them started so they can run through the auction on time. But yeah, what I guess I'm trying to say is the effort they go to to make the sale flow and work that bit better is um, really good up there. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. And if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching. And until the next one, I'll see you guys later.